Well, ever since the Deadliest Warrior, the game review came out, I knew there would be kind of a lunatic fringe that uh, disagreed with me over this game, and I was I was kind of hoping there would be, because there's kind of a craziness factor in, in anything, you know? So, like, uh, there's always going to be, like, kind of a 10 percentile who... who Things like Are you crazy. This was a great game. So I really wanted to like. I appreciate all the positive reviews that are agreeing with me, but I really wanted to see the nut bars out there who were going to stick up for this one. And I thought I would uh, just kind of Twitter back and forth with these guys and kind of retaliate. And then Angry Joe posted a comment on my Twitter where Spike Games themselves actually responded to my review and uh, I will read this for you and hopefully you can hear me because I'm going to read it off the screen so um, I've also got a bunch of comments open that people posted and I will I will answer my my uh, my critics and explain my review a little more because I'll get to this but I think people misunderstand that when I do like a three or four minute review which this was and I show you one match people think all I played was one match. And so, by necessity, a review is a little bit of a simplified look at a game. And people don't seem to understand, like, oh, you only saw that one match, so Spoonie only played one match, then quit, then wrote that review. Not true, okay? Um, but I'll get to that. I want to read the response from Spike Games themselves. Uh, let me see. It's, uh... And now I've lost it. Oh, here it is. Spike Games. Thanks, folks. We know the game is not perfect, and we are, look, we are working to fix things in the game. These kinds of reviews from people that don't really give the game more than a glancing look are discouraging, but the feedback on these forums helps us as developers see what real gamers think about the game. It was discouraging that nowhere in the review was mentioned the price point, the dodging, stamina, or parry systems, but oh well, you can't please everybody. The fact that Deadliest Warrior is even in the same sentence as Tekken, Street Fighter, and Mortal Kombat is good enough for us. Even if they are only comparing them to tear the game apart. If we had $20 million in two years to build a game, I wonder what that would be like. Oh, we can dream, but when you pay for milk and expect honey, you're going to end up with milk and be pissed about it. It's not our fault that you are delusional. I'd love it if someone on this board made a comment on Spoonie that shed some light on what this game is all about. But thanks again for your support. Cheers, Spike Games. Okay. I will respond to Spike Games. How I didn't mention that there's dodging, stamina, or parry systems. And um, this actually ties into one of the comments I got where... I, I'll, I'll just read this one post here that I thought was, that was, that was pretty good. Um, how I didn't accurately weigh the pros and cons of this game. He complains that there are only eight characters when knowing full well that it's an arcade game. He didn't even note the diversity in gameplay of each fighter. He says that in the future DLC is pointless because no one will want to pay more Microsoft points on this game. How arrogant do you have to be to completely dismiss any other possible options? Okay. The price point and the fact that it's an arcade game. And Spike TV... Spike TV or Spike Games, is throwing up its hands and saying, Oh, how dare Spoonie pick on us, little developers, who released our little shitty game, and so you can't judge it as fairly as every other game that's on the market. Okay, okay. The price point is very low, and believe me, you get what you pay for, which ain't much. It's 10 bucks, 800 Microsoft points, and even for that... I have, I have paid less money for far better games on, on Xbox Live. And if you really want to open that door, I will name off the top of my head a half dozen games on the Xbox Live Arcade that were made by small developers that are far better and probably cost far less money. If you really want to open that door, I'll engage that debate with you, but you're going to lose that one. Eight Fighters is not much. Not even for a fighter game. The fighter game is a very competitive genre. And when you make a really... When you make a simplistic, not that well controlling, not that extraordinary looking game, I, I complain that the graphics aren't that good, and they're not. There's really nothing remarkable about them. If 
I were to classify them, I would say I would call them distinctly middle of the road. It's it's not that good. It's not that many fighters. And in a market where I can I can walk down the aisle and easily pick up almost any other given fighter game and play that one and find it better with more fighters with better or at least more distinctive and entertaining graphics, it's going to lose almost every comparison. And so if I'm complaining about the price, if I'm not mentioning the price point, it's because there's nothing to comment on. It's a waste of money and it's a waste of time. I would recommend almost any other fighting game over this one. And that's it. Um, the guy complains about the Spartan's javelin one-shot killing him while he's either running towards his opponent in a straight line or he's just standing still. It's called dodging. What I find hilarious is that he proceeds to call the Spartan broken because he was just getting his ass handed to him for not using such a simple strategy. Okay, as I said, in that review, that was my first ever game. Okay? I didn't know that there were one-shot kills in that game, and I didn't know that such a bullshit ending to a match was possible. I played this game with uh, Skitch, I believe Y Ruler of Time, Sean Faust, and several other people all night long. Probably about five hours of the Deadliest Warrior. I've got about five hours of Deadliest Warrior footage on this thing. I saw it all. I saw it twice. I took notes on it. I played the entire thing. I played well over probably about a hundred matches on that thing. It sucks, okay? And yes, dodging is an option. And that rarely happened to me ever, you know, after that point where I would get routinely one shot, one hit killed in that game. Where, knowing that that's possible, yeah, when you start the match out, you are going to immediately switch to your medium range weapon, if you want, and you are immediately going to start dodging like a motherfucker, especially on a guy who goes seeking headshots. Um, people also complain that I, I minimize the control scheme to where there are actually high, medium, and low attack, uh, attack buttons, where you can, you can aim for the legs, you can aim for the middle torso, and you can aim for the head. And I said that there's no way to control where your shots are going. I stand by that, okay? Because you can indeed aim your shots at a certain region, but that does not mean that you have any control over where your shots are going, if you follow me. So let's say I'm aiming for mid-torso, like I'm hitting the medium attack button. Your guy might swing, do an overhead swing, but it's aimed for the torso. He might do like some kind of upward strike. He might do some swing to the left or swing to the right. So you can't actually target anything. You're not targeting anything. You're just kind of, you're aiming for a zone. You know what I mean? So just because you're aiming low, you might still hit the guy's arm. I swear, like you, you can, you'll be just, you'll be mashing the button trying to aim for a certain zone and all of a sudden the guy's arm flies off and you don't know why. You weren't aiming for that. You weren't going like, I want to hit his left arm. No, you were just like, middle attack. Um, I, I've been aiming high and disabled arms before. I've been aiming low and disabled arms before. I've been aiming high and disabled legs. I don't know what's going on. It's, it's, I still stand by the fact you have no control over this thing. So, dodging. Yes. Dodging is a legitimate strategy in this game. In fact, it's one of the only strategies available, um, especially when you're playing a guy with no armor. And so people are saying, like, every character has a distinctive uh, fighting style, and I don't find that that's true either. Either your guy has armor, he has a shield, or he has nothing. So guys like the Apache and the Ninja, their main strategy is to use the dodge function and flip around a whole bunch. And I'm not really going to call that a feature when the movement controls are so bad that the ninja and apache and guys who rely heavily in dodging are more relying on the fact that the controls are so bad you can't easily turn to face your opponent so when you roll behind a guy the guy immediately starts struggling with the controls to turn and face his opponent while you stab him in the back that seems to be more like relying on bad controls and i would almost call it a glitch than than good strategy or good game controls Again, you hold this up to any other fighting game, even discount, like, like Xbox Live Arcade fighting games, like uh, anything really, uh, and, and, and you, you say, is this comparable? And it's not, okay? Um, he complains that you start with close-range weapons being default when you can easily switch to mid-range weapons before the fight even starts. 
Is he really that lazy? Yeah, I'm really that lazy. Are you? Are the guys who are designing this game really that lazy to not want you to start off with the logical weapon in, in at the start of the fight? You know, yeah, I can switch the weapons with the push of a button, but should I really have to push that button to start the fight that way? Shouldn't I be able to customize my fighter so I can start with whatever weapon I want? No? How about that? There's a feature for you. You know, that's, it, and it seems like, oh, well, you know, he's just picking on a small-time developer. But I've seen lots of fighting games, the, the Marvel vs. series or Capcom you know, vs. series, where you can, you can fine-tune your characters and you can select what fighting style you want them to start with, what, what uh, you can customize their weapons before the fight starts, and you can't do that with Deadliest Warrior. Um, he states that if you get hit in the back or head by any projectile, you die instantly. This is completely false and only true among the larger projectiles. Um, I found that every time I got hit in the back with any projectile, I died. Any time. Any projectile. Played a lot. Maybe there's an update since then, but uh, when I played it, that was the case. Uh, no way to determine where your attacks land. Again, I got more. Um, oh, some more things Spike said. Um, stamina and parry. The stamina system... There is a little bar under your health bar, which is your stamina bar. And if you attack over much, like if you start wailing on the attack feature and you don't let up your stamina drains and you find you can't attack as quickly and you can't attack and you don't do as much damage. Likewise, if you hold down the block button, your stamina drains really quickly. And you'll find that um, if you block too much, all of a sudden your block stops, stops working. And... This, I wasn't, when I played this game, I wasn't like, wow, that stamina thing was a great feature. I was starting to curse at the screen going, wow, why the fuck is my block button never working? Because I would try to block a legitimate hail of attacks, and all of a sudden my guy would just stop blocking, and I would keep getting hit. And it was, it was actually rather confusing for a time until I realized, oh, my stamina bar is drained, and, and Sean Faust was like, oh, your stamina bar is drained, you can't keep blocking all the time. And I'm like, all right, all right. So, but the thing is, though, it, it, it like I said, when I was saying that the game sometimes feels like letting you win, and it, it seems like just pure random chance is what I mean. Is your block just sometimes works and sometimes doesn't? It, it's some kind of ratio depending on what your stamina bar is at. Uh, if if it drains in the middle of a combo, you stop blocking and you just you you get butchered. Um, if you're not facing exactly where the guy is. You can't, you can't block it. Um, and, oh, there was another really good comment. Hang on. Um, where was it? The big reason you can, die, you can die in a single hit is the game is made for a realistic type of fighting. The game is made so that it's very possible to die quickly a la Bushido Blade. Ugh. Compared to everything else in this game, it's not that bad. Hell, it doesn't even happen that often. You, on the other hand, make it sound like one-hit kills are the only way to win. I got news for you. It is. Okay? Here's my problem with the stamina bar, aside from the sporadic blocking. The fact that the, the matches themselves last, on average, about five seconds mean that the stamina bar almost never comes into play. Uh, the parrying system, I never really got it to work, and I couldn't tell... You know, it, like, I, I, it's some kind of timing thing. Like, if you block just as an attack is hitting, you get a parry. Um, if I ever managed to pull it off, I couldn't tell, because the game never really highlighted this fact. I couldn't get it to work. But yeah, the stamina bar, when, when the matches actually didn't end almost immediately when, in, like, a one-combo kill or a one-hit kill, the stamina thing pretty much got me killed more often than not. Uh, what was it? Um... Yeah, one-hit kills are the only way to win. I got news for you. When you start playing the uh, single-player campaign and the, the, uh, the enemies start getting really, really hard, you start to rely on the one-hit kill to carry you through. Like, you start trying to find ways to work the one-hit kill so you don't have to fight these guys because they're cheating bastards. These guys have just such cheap, cheap tactics, like the... Like I said, the Apache. You really hope that you get the one-hit kill on the Apache just so he doesn't fucking kill you, like, immediately. It's things like that. So, yeah, um, just ask any of the other guys I was playing on Xbox Live with. The fact that um, 
most of the footage I got from Sean was him trying to really desperately work for the one-hit kill. And he's a good gamer. He's better than I am. Um, the game does have about as much skill as Bushido Blade. Okay. You're just wrong. I, I will rarely say this about anyone. About like, oh, you've got a good point. No, you're wrong. You are wrong. You know how many characters the original Street Fighter 2 had? Eight. Then there's Blaze Blue, which had 12. And I'm fairly sure that was sold for more than 10 bucks when it first came out. Yes. And that was about 20 years ago. This is 2010. Gamers expect more. They deserve more. Even from small-time publishers like Spike Games. Let's face it, guys. This was a cash-in game license on a shitty TV franchise, and 10 bucks is probably more than you can even expect to get from anyone who is not insane. People asked my opinion on this game on whether or not it was worth the money, whether or not it was playable, and whether or not it was any fun. You are unfairly chalking my review up to a hatred of the TV show, which is a legitimate, seething, burning hatred of the TV show, but if the game was any good, believe me, I would tell you. I would love to get in front of you and tell you that unlike the show, the Deadliest Warrior game is worth a shit. Other complaints, such as not being able to face your opponent automatically, and the lack of a story mode are much more trivial than you make them out to be. Turning, for example, isn't nearly as big an issue as you claim. You just turn yourself around and that's it. You can't do. You make it sound like you can't do squat without facing your opponent. And since when, sto since when was story mode an important part of a fighting game? You don't play fighters that much, do you? Uh, let me see. There's a. There, there was another one. There was one really great comment I got. Uh, hang on a second, let me find it. Oh, where was it? There was one guy in here who said, uh, he said, why are you complaining about uh, not being able to, t to auto turn and face your opponent in a fight? You don't auto turn to face your opponent in a real fight. Yeah, you do. If somebody is punching you in the back of the head, I'm pretty sure you'll try to turn around and face him. If the guy is circling around you, I'm pretty sure that as a natural reflex, you will turn to face that guy. Yeah, I, oh man, I wish I could find this comment because it was so fucking stupid. I couldn't believe this asshole. I kind of shook my head at the review. Anyone who doesn't like the fact that you can lose in one to five hits, well, go play something a little less realistic. This was supposed to be a game partly rooted in realism. Okay, yeah, and I mean, really, do you auto-face in a real fist fight? Can you take a spear to the head? Can you throw some the same punch over and over and not expect someone to figure it out? This wasn't a review, if you ask me. A reviewer has the obligation to play more than one match before declaring it the worst game ever. I played it for five hours. If this is the worst game ever, he's the worst reviewer ever. Wow. Okay. Um, engage in hyperbole much? Yeah, okay, so... I don't mind a game that's rooted in realism. I don't. I like Bushido Blade. That game requires talent. It requires skill. It requires timing. And this was a game on the original PlayStation, and it far, far exceeded what this game was going for. This game is... A button-mashing, luck-fest, crossed with Mortal Kombat childish gore and fatality moves. That's all it is. If you want to get guys in a room together, like, if you, like, I, I'm just trying to figure out the target audience for this. And that's a bunch of chuckling, college-age, stoner potheads sitting in a room, having that argument about pirate versus ninja, astronaut versus caveman, and then... Saying like, hey, you know that Deadliest Warrior was a really funny show, let's play the game. You get those guys sitting around the game, they're going to get laughs out of it for about 10 minutes, then realize there's nothing to this game, that it sucks, there's no depth, there's no complexity, there's no skill involved. It's just working out the broken tactics for each fighter and exploiting them as best as possible. That's it. 
This game has about seriously like any given match is about to last is bound to last 20 seconds in total. The person who loses is always going to feel like he got robbed because of shitty controls, poor hit detection, and poor animation. It's not a t it's not as tightly programmed as any other fighting game I think I've ever played in the last 10 years. And if you've got 10 bucks to spend, let me okay. Here here's what it is. Here's what it is. I, I keep coming back to the price point because, again, Spike TV keeps like saying, "Oh, we're this little, we're this little developer, and what do you expect for ten bucks? What do you expect? We didn't have this great game. We didn't have this. You know, we don't have the money. We don't have the power. We don't have the programmers. Then don't make your fucking game. You know what? This is where the big boys play. Okay? You want to make a game? Make a good fucking game. Don't make a shitty fucking game. Slap a ten dollar price tag on it and say, "Well, you get what you pay for." No. No, okay? We want good games. We want games that don't suck. If I've got 10 bucks, you know what I'm going to fucking do? I'm not going to pick up the deadliest... I'm not going to say, like, well, all I've got is 10 bucks. I'm going to pick up a shitty fucking game from Xbox Live. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to Blockbuster, and I'm going to rent two fucking games from the aisle down there. I'm going to rent Street Fighter 4, and I'm going to rent fucking Blaze Blue. And I'm going to get my friends together, and we're going to play a good fucking fighting game. I'm not going to play fucking Deadliest Warrior. Don't pull this shit where we're poor boys. All we can do is make these eight bucks. You know what? If it wasn't Spike Games, if it was like, if it was Angry Joe or some other guy, like some group of four friends who came forward and they put on the Xbox Live Arcade, they're like, you know, these four guys, they got together, they coded this really shitty game, but it's eight bucks. You know what? I might have been a little more merciful. I might have been a little more lenient on this one. It says like, well, you know, it's four guys, no budget, no money, and they made this really shitty game. It's still not that good, but you know what? support these guys. No, I'm not going to have any fucking mercy for Spike Games making their shitty fucking Deadliest Warrior game. Your game sucks. Your show sucks. The end.